Good afternoon. I want to welcome you, the media. We're very pleased to have you here, and certainly our Nursing Coalition partners, as we uh, gather together to have a discussion about the proposed VA rule. In addition, we've been joined by our Military Officers Association of America and the Air Force Sergeants Association. We're very pleased to have all of you here. My name is Juan Quintana. I'm a certified registered nurse. I'm a CRNA. And <clears throat> as we move forward here, I want you to know that CRNAs across America represent 49,000, getting close actually to 50,000 members, providing anesthesia services in all capacities. I am also a business over, owner in the rural Texas area, providing anesthesia services for 16 years to those folks. And finally, uh, I have spent or did spend nine years of service to our uh, nation as a reservist in the U.S. Air Force. Today we're going to hear from each of our representatives, uh, three national uh, nursing organizations and two from our military service organizations. But the overarching message has to be clear for everyone, and that is that our veterans are waiting too long to get the health care they have earned and they deserve. We, as advanced practice registered nurses, and that involves uh, nurse practitioners, certified nurse midwives, clinical nurse specialists, and certified registered nurse anesthetists, all realize that we are ready and capable to provide the services that are necessary for our veterans today. So we fully support the proposal by the VA to expand the veterans' access to care by recognizing APRNs to the full extent of their education and skills. For years now, it's been clear to all of us that the VA healthcare system has tried, and despite all their efforts, we still need access to services for our veterans. We're just not getting there. In anesthesia, for example, an independent VA assessment indicated that anesthesia services and access to those services was one of the limiting factors, in fact, for veterans getting surgical care, sometimes waiting months to get those services. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That's the good news. In collaboration with the VA, APRNs have, in fact, revealed a plan to solve this problem. We're here to make it happen. This new rule that was published in May 25th on the Federal Register now allows advanced practice registered nurses, including CRNAs, to practice to the full scope of their education and skill. That means providing increased access to services to all veterans. And in terms of access, CRNAs have been administering anesthesia for 150 years. We provide services in underserved areas, in ruralities, certainly in some VAs without uh, anesthesiologist involvement, and in addition to that, in the forward surgical teams that provide services to our soldiers who are in harm's way. In terms of safety, CRNAs have been providing safe, high-quality, effective services, anesthesia everywhere in all locations for all types of patients for many years. Our studies show that we are very safe at what we do. So it's time to get this resolved. It's time for evidence to trump politics when it comes to our veterans' access to care. Our opposition brings little to no evidence. Their arguments go nowhere. It's anecdotal. We have, at least in anesthesia, nine different studies since 2000 that prove that, in fact, Anesthesia services by, by CRNAs are equal to our anesthesiologist colleagues. In the most recent study published in May in medical care, we showed that in fact barriers and supervision requirements provide no beneficial impact to the anesthesia services that we provide. It's time for change. This proposal has incurred an unprecedented amount of attention. In fact, more than 40,000 comments have come forward. That's a record number of submissions. The most recent numbers that we have, in fact, show us that for any comments in the last 10 years, all rules combined, 
The most they had ever had was 6,000, 6,300. So we are way over the top on that. And we still need your help. Our initial review of comments shows a wide, wide reaching support. Lots of people are getting involved in this discussion, about two thirds in favor of what we do. So I thank you, I encourage you to comment, and I'd like to now present to you Dr. Cindy Cook, who is the president of the American Association of Nurse Practitioners. Dr. Cook. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Cindy Cook. I am the president of the American Association of Nurse Practitioners. AANP is the largest membership organization representing nurse practitioners across all specialties. We really are the voice of nurse practitioners. As a family nurse practitioner, I've spent my career providing primary care to active and retired military and their families. I'm also married to a veteran. Today, we are here to support the Department of Veterans Affairs proposal to increase access to health care for our nation's veterans. Too many veterans are waiting to rece receive the health care they need and deserve in the VA system. According to VA statistics, over half a million veterans are waiting more than 30 days for care. Nearly 300,000 are waiting 31 to 60 days for health care. Veterans, AANP, and the VA agree. We need to give veterans better access to health care in the VA system. On May the 25th, the VA opened that 60-day public comment period on a proposed regulation that would address these challenges by giving veterans direct access to NP care at all VA facilities. It's a solid plan for modernizing the VA system. We applaud the VA for taking this important action. It will immediately improve veterans' access to care and we are doing everything that we can to support this proposal. The VA's proposal recognizes the results of decades of research demonstrating NP's outstanding patient outcomes. It reflects recommendations made by organizations including the IOM and the National Council of the State Boards of Nursing and years of experience in states across the country. Military and veterans organizations like the ones you will hear from today are weighing in to support this rule. The proposed rule is zero risk, zero delay, and a zero cost solution to ensuring veterans have access to needed timely care and reduced wait times in the VA system. Today, 4,800 nurse practitioners work across the VA providing clinical assessments, ordering and interpreting diagnostic tests, making diagnoses, and initiating and managing treatment plans, including prescribing medications. Last week, we re released the results of our annual survey, and it confirmed what we already know. Our profession is the fastest growing primary care workforce. NPs now represent 222,000 solutions to strengthening health care. This is all about access. It's no surprise. Today, patients in 21 states in the District of Columbia already have direct access to NPs. In fact, in the last year alone, NPs delivered care in more than 800 million patient visits. We bring more than a 50-year track record of service to our patients, including those in our nation's military and veterans. We hold advanced degrees, national certification, and bring years of clinical expertise to patient care. Last week, I met with veterans in San Antonio who support the Veterans Administration and its plan to, vi to provide direct access to high-quality nurse practitioner care across the VA system. As one of them told me, one veteran left waiting for care is one too many. It's time to bring this care directly and more readily to our nation's veterans, to honor our heroes with the high quality health care they deserve. There are just days left to make a difference 
and we invite every American veteran, service member, and their families to support the VA in moving forward with this imp uh, imp very important proposal. Now I would like to invite my colleague, Darla, Dr. Marla J. Weston, Chief Executive Officer of the American Nurses Association, to the podium. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you everyone for being here. As you heard, I'm Marla Weston. I'm the CEO for the American Nurses Association, which represents the 3.6 million registered nurses in our country. And every day in hospitals and clinics, in schools and homes, registered nurses are providing care directly to our patients. Often we are the first line of care for our patients. I myself am a registered nurse and prior to serving as the CEO of the American Nurses Association, I worked in the Department of Veterans Affairs in the Veterans Health Administration as a Deputy Chief Officer in Workforce Management and Consulting. So I know firsthand the care that our veterans need and the care that our 6,000 advanced practice registered nurses who serve within the Department of Veterans Affairs are prepared to deliver. This rule would remove the antiquated, burdensome barrier to access to high quality health care that advanced practice registered nurses could provide to our veterans. It would allow veterans to get faster access. It would allow more provider. And it would enable veterans to get care without having to jump through the hoops that are currently in place. It's far past time for the VA to allow APRNs to do the education that they, to do the care that they are educated and prepared to do. In fact, this proposed rule is very consistent with the evidence-based recommendations that were advanced by the Institute of Medicine in its 2010 report on the future of nursing. In that report, it clearly stated that APRNs should be allowed to practice to the full extent of their education and training. But unfortunately, if you've, as you've heard, in spite of all of the evidence and widespread support, there has been a pushback from organized medicine. And these assertions that APRNs are underqualified or undereducated are just plain false. And they are harmful to our veterans having access to care. They're putting our veterans at risk. So the research is clear. Nurses consistently deliver exceptional care of high quality with high levels of patient satisfaction when they're allowed to function at the full extent of their education and preparation. So there's no basis whatsoever for requiring any supervision. The healthcare needs of our veterans, as we all know, are urgent. They are well deserved and they are growing. And so our veterans deserve the best care that we can provide. And that will happen only when every member of the healthcare team, including advanced practice registered nurses, are able to function at the full scope of their education and preparation. Bottom line, the VA's proposal will close the gap between the care that our health care, that, that our veterans really deserve and the health care that advanced practice registered nurses are prepared to provide. APRNs serving throughout the VA system will finally be able to fully deliver the care that they are educated to do. They will be able to provide timely, efficient, high quality care for every patient. So thank you very much. I want to introduce Jane Kirschling, my colleague from the uh, American Association of Colleges of Nursing. Good afternoon. I'm Jane Kirschling, and I'm the Dean and Professor at the University of Maryland School of Nursing, and also wear the hat as the Director of Interprofessional Education. And I'm here today on behalf of the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. As my colleagues have stated, our goal is that American veterans have the best possible care when they need it. The Veterans Health Administration wanted to address shortages in demand. There are many ways to approach this. The one they've landed on is evidence-based. 
This proposal would allow veterans direct, direct access to APRN services. Leading authorities such as the National Governors Association, the Institute of Medicine, and the Federal Trade Commission recognize that barriers to practice for APRNs impede health care access and quality. What we are advocating is that policy aligns with evidence. Academic nursing recognizes that in order to care for our servicemen and women who have given so much of themselves to our country, we must work with our local VA facilities and communities to serve their needs. This is a mission that we do not take lightly. In our graduate nursing programs, there are over 70,000 APRN students. These are 70,000 future nurse practitioners, certified registered nurse anesthetists, certified nurse midwives, and clinical nurse specialists. We know that, education, that the education we provide impacts the care that your mother, your father, sister, brother, and every veteran receive. It is our duty as educators to constantly reinforce the bigger picture. We entered this profession to improve health. And to that, we must build an education program that allows for experiences in all practice settings. This is why schools of nursing partner with and provide clinical rotations in VA facilities. Our graduates must understand the unique needs of the veteran population. At the University of Maryland School of Nursing, our nursing students who receive clinical training are at the Baltimore VA Medical Center and they share that it's a tremendous opportunity to learn. For example, Valerie Hampton graduated in May from our master's second degree clinical nurse leader program. A Mississippi native, she did her final semester practicum with the Baltimore VA Medical Center, and she's now applying for positions to work as a nurse at a VA hospital. Her commitment to work with veterans who suffer from cardiovascular disease is grounded by her own family's health history and the richness of her practicum experience. What will the impact of the VHA's ultimate ruling on changes to the nursing handbook be? One scenario is that veterans will have better access to care. The other, it is likely that veterans will continue to experience delays and weakened continuity of care. The reality is that only time will tell what the outcome will be. But we stand here as advocates promoting the policy that has been reviewed and promoted internally and is supported by evidence externally. Thank you. And I do now welcome back Dr. Quintana to the microphone. Thank you very much. And I hope that you've had an opportunity to hear from the nursing community, understand nursing in terms of healthcare is the most trusted profession in healthcare 15 years running. But we're not the only ones saying support this rule. In fact, the rule is widely supported by veteran service groups and the AARP. The AARP represents about 3.7 million households across the nation that have veterans involved in them. Copies of the AARP's previous letters of support are available at the check-in table. So today I'd like to hear from two of our military service organizations who are here to support the rule as well. The Air Force Sergeants Association and the Military Officers Association of America. First up, I'll invite Mr. Rob Frank, CEO of the Air Force Sergeants Association. Great. Thanks, Dr. Quintana. Wow, better access to care. How does that sound for our veterans, right? So I appreciate the opportunity to come and address uh, on this particular topic for care for our veterans. As the Chief Executive Officer for the Air Force Sergeants Association, I'm proud to represent the over 100,000 members, the enlisted members, the active duty, the guard, the reserve, the veteran, the retiree, and their family members on such an important topic. You know, I spent many years in the Air Force, 26, uh, almost 26 to be exact, and half of that was as a first sergeant. And my job as a first sergeant was to really be involved and get to understand the needs of those airmen that were serving in the unit that I was in. And I will tell you time and time again what resonated the most. It wasn't anything more than providing for good health care, not only for themselves, but their family. It's not that they asked for it, but that's an expectation that we provide to them and continue to provide to them. 
why not do that as a veteran? When they've transitioned from the service, whether they're a retiree or a veteran, and have service-connected disability, why would we not provide that same level of health care, if not better? And so, as we look at this particular issue, it does surprise me that the VA is not doing this particular practice today. You know, there's a saying within, within the Veterans uh, Administration um, and the different hospitals is, you've been to one VA, you've been to one VA, right? And there's hundreds of them. Uh, and you know, we really applaud the efforts of Secretary McDonald in trying to get after the issues that the VA has. Great organization, provide care for our great veterans. The less than 7% that have ever served all of Americans today, providing that health care. But trying is not enough. We have to succeed. And so as we look at this particular topic, it's not consistently applied across all VAs. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of areas that we have educated, trained, and experienced health care providers who are not being utilized to their full potential. Yet at the DOD, we put them on the battlefield and in the front lines and care for these veterans, excuse me, these service members when they serve. Why in the world, when they get back home, would we not want to provide that access to care? I mean, can you imagine calling up your doc and saying, hey, I needed to get an appointment to get seen for whatever your ailment is. They're like, hey, yeah, okay, we can get you in about uh, 143 days. I know that's kind of an arbitrary number, but the reality is, is people wait days and months and years for care. Yet there's an option to maybe even get them in the next day or at least in a shorter period of time than that. Why are we not doing that today? And so having heard and seen everything on this topic and understanding the importance of this and experienced as a veteran, these folks and the care that I get, I don't understand why we're not doing this today in the VA. We fully support the VA's effort to employ these health care providers to their maximum potential. Because the bottom line is our veterans have to be at the center of this topic. And until we put our veterans at the center of this topic, we won't arrive at the right answer. But when you put the veteran at the center and you say, I want to provide that care for the veteran, and we have a trained, educated, and experienced person that can provide that level of care that's necessary for that veteran, how could you not have this in place? So we fully support the Secretary's efforts, the VA's efforts to put this rule in place. We urge Congress to make sure that that gets put into place now. Because now is the right time. Our veterans are the right people to take care of the less than 7% and today less than 1% and even serve today to protect the freedoms that we all take for granted sometimes. So we want the VA and we hope we want to help the VA and want to encourage the VA to do the right thing for our veterans to take care of them. On behalf of the Air Force Sergeants Association, I appreciate the opportunity to come speak before you today and uh, not only from my organization but I'd like to introduce my colleague Kathleen Beasley, Beasley excuse me, from the Military Officers Association who'd like to make a few remarks as well. Thank you, Rob. My name is Kathy Beasley, and I proudly served a 30-year career as an officer in the United States Navy. On behalf of the 390,000 members of the Military Officers Association of America, we strongly believe that our nation's veterans deserve timely, accessible, and quality health care. We strongly support the VA's proposal to strengthen veterans' access to care by recognizing the VA's advanced practice registered nurses' ability to practice the full extent of their education and skill. It is consistent with the National Academy of Medicine recommendations and is in alignment with the recommendations of the VA independent assessment. Most importantly, it will help reduce the wait times for our veterans that they face for their care that they have earned and deserve. For 30 years serving as a Navy nurse, I had the privilege to serve alongside truly excellent nurse practitioners, nurse anesthetists, and other APRNs, and excellent physicians and outstanding healthcare administrators and leaders. At sea, at major naval hospitals in the United States and around the world, we gave our sailors and Marines the very best care. In the military services, combat support hospitals, and forward surgical teams, and in the Indian Health Service, and public health services, advanced practice nurses, like the ones I served with, have full practice authority. But in many VA facilities today, they do not have full practice authority. And the people who will suffer as a result are our veterans. 
they have to wait. The congressionally mandated VA independent assessment says they have to wait for primary care, mental health care, women's health care, and for surgical services. In part because policy and practice at local VA facilities keeps nurse practitioners and nurse anesthetists from performing the full scope of their job. You know, in the Navy, we would never train a sailor to 10 skills, then limit them to use only three. It makes no sense. No one would do that. But that's what illogical and wasteful practice limitations on highly skilled advanced practice nurses do. Our veterans need all the skills advanced practice nurses can provide them. The VA's access to care proposal and current congressional legislation would make that a reality. It would align VA with other federal health care services and it would serve to honor our veterans. There's one more factor to consider. A system where 10 advanced practice nurses in one hospital have 10 different state licensures and 10 different scopes of practice and unnecessary supervision requirements is not a system at all. It results in red tape and bureaucracy and failure. It is a system the VA has today. This aspect of the system needs to be corrected. So let's honor our veterans with the excellent health care they need and they deserve. That's why MOA, the Military Officers Association, supports full access and full practice for advanced practice nurses in the Veterans Administration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathy. And I think what's clear to all of us here as we hear from six different perspectives is that veterans cannot be the victims here. I leave you with three important thoughts as I try to summate all of this that I've heard today. And one is that veterans need efficient, accessible health care today. They need it now. Number two, that evidence should trump politics when it comes to the health care of our veterans. And lastly, that this proposal won't cost the VA a single penny more than what it's already doing. The APRNs are already part of the VA system. Utilizing them to their maximum capabilities is what we're looking at. I thank you. So at this time, I'd like to take a second and invite all the speakers to come up and give the media an opportunity or any of those of you who are here to open up uh, questions that you might have if you want to come back this way. If you do, just please raise your hand. We'll have a microphone that we'll bring around to you. Please state your name and affiliation. Please speak into the microphone so that we can hear you clearly. Uh, if you're watching the webcast, you can send your questions to Jessica Weimer via email at jessica, J-E-S-S-I-C-A dot Weimer, W-E-I-M-E-R at Fleischman, F-L-E-I-S-H-M-A-N dot com. So we welcome any questions that you might have for any of us. Get that microphone to you right away. Hi, uh, I'm Joyce Frieden from MedPage today. Um, I was wondering, I, I think in the uh, VA proposal they had put something in about not wanting to do anything with the CRNAs in particular right now and uh, I, I just wanted you to address that because it, it seemed like you were saying they, they might in fact do something. Well there are definitely from the independent VA assessment there are definite needs that are not being currently met so cardiac surgeries, um, we know colonoscopies, uh, EGDs, uh, all of those are uh, procedures which we know still require access in the VA. So it's our sense that that is still a need. Now, is it my contention that certainly the VA will prioritize how they set up the system? I think so. Uh, I think that's important. They're going to hit the needs that are most needed right now and then basically move the others into the system. But um, I, I would argue that if if I'm ready to have cardiac surgery, I don't want to wait. Any other questions? All right. Any last thoughts? Well, we certainly thank you again very much for joining us and participating in this very important uh, discussion. As you can see, we are passionate about what we believe, and we know that our veterans need our care, and we are ready to provide it. And we thank you.